Then now I have the pleasure to announce uh, uh, our uh, friend uh, Alexander to be the moderator. So I hope for, we, for him uh, the same success as uh, to our friend uh, Zava Zava to this morning. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chair. A very good afternoon to all of you. I'm really very happy to be here with you today. And for me, it's a pleasure to moderate this session on uh, big data for measuring the information society. Uh, before I give the floor and announce the speakers uh, for this uh, panel, I would like to recall that last week we had the fourth uh, UN Big Data Conference for Official Statistics that took place in Bogota, in Colombia. And I would like to just mention that the main topic of this conference was related to the innovation and modernization of the national statistical systems through trusted data collaboratives. And in this context, the use of big data to complement traditional data sources for the production of official statistics is key to national statistical offices to take full advantage of all this massive data that we have in these big data sources. And as you know, these big data sources comes from the ICT industry, the telecom and uh, internet providers, uh, social media companies, Twitter, Facebook, for instance, uh, mobile and sensor data, tracking data, uh, of course, uh, private sector transaction data. So we have a lot of data sources that we could take uh, benefit of producing official statistics if we have uh, shared data policies, if we have in place uh, legal frameworks for data sharing, data protection, of course, data privacy. So uh, all these uh, issues, I think that it is an opportunity to, for us to discuss in this session. And I, I think that it's also important to mention that national statistical uh, offices will be under increasing pressure to produce high quality uh, in a timely manner on a wide range of areas, uh, often with limited resources. So uh, innovation and modernization of National Statistical Office is, of course, of utmost importance. And data sharing and the use of big data source is really key uh, in this context. Well. Uh, this session will showcase the results of the ITU pilot project on big data for measuring the info information society. And in particular, we are going to address some key issues that I hope that our panelists will address and uh, discuss the results of this project. And I believe that the ITU pilot project definitely generated a lot of insights from using big data sources to produce ICT-related uh, indicators vis-a-vis -vis the traditional uh, data collection methods that we have in our national statistical systems. Also, I think that we are going to see insights from this project that can be turned into actionable knowledge and support efforts to bridge the digital divide. Also, we are going to see the challenges these pilot countries faced in using uh, those big data sources in terms of negotiating with the uh, data providers, uh, and also on how to overcome this challenge, and also on how to benefit from the use of big data for producing official, uh, and also complement official ICT-related statistics. So without further ado, may I invite Mr. Luis G. Cesare, who is the head of the big data implementation at Vodafone Group to give his address. Uh, Mr. G. Zazari, you have 15 minutes. You have the floor. Warm welcome uh, to everyone here uh, uh, after lunch. So, uh, Facebook reminded me that two years ago today, I was packing up my apartment in New York City, getting ready to move to London to embark on this big data journey at Vodafone. 
Uh, at the time, I had just finished building a big data capability from the ground up at a large US-based insurance firm, and everyone around me was asking me, are you crazy? You just finished building a big data capability. Why are you going back to the beginning and, uh, and building it again? And uh, the answer is uh, that we as telco providers literally connect the world. And we have a tremendous opportunity, more than anyone else, I believe, to shape the future and to really improve the customer experience through the use of uh, big data analytics. And the slides are not showing uh, in the back. Can you help? Well, we can continue with or without uh, slides. Uh, hopefully at some point you'll see the slides. Uh, where are we on our journey uh, through big data uh, at Vodafone? Uh, right now we are in uh, nine countries in the world to be 15 by the end of the year and uh, in all Vodafone markets uh, by the end of uh, next year. And uh, we have put the customer experience first and foremost in uh, our big data uh, initiatives uh, focus. It's not only about what we do, but uh, also about how we do it. And uh, we build privacy by design into everything uh, that we do with big data. Our privacy officers are literally sitting at the table uh, with us day by day, involved in the process from beginning to end. Uh, we also pride ourselves on being just as innovative in our technology security as we are with our data science uh, algorithms. It is a point of competitive differentiation in this space and it is a responsibility to our customers. And while we believe that everything we do is for the best interests uh, of our customers, uh, it is ultimately their choice. And we give them that choice uh, through uh, informed consent. Are you coming for tech support? Yes. Uh, and miraculously, we have slides. Thank you. Okay, so what are we focusing on at Vodafone? At Vodafone, we're focusing on helping people connect and communicate through big data, both in traditional ways uh, and in um, new ways. Uh, we spend the bulk of our time on strengthening the customer experience and delivering what we call the three Ps of the digital customer experience predictive, proactive, and personalized uh, service to all of our 450 million customers throughout the world. We are also using big data to optimize the machine that uh, is uh, a telco, uh, networks, technology, uh, other areas of operation. But we're not stopping there. We're also using big data to create new insights and solutions. You may have seen last week the launch of our Internet of Things suite of products, uh, the V suite. Uh, those needs were directly uncovered uh, through big data analytics. And uh, big data analytics is helping us to uh, solve the, those needs for our customers. Uh, with needs for our GigaCube uh, portable internet, our pet tracker, our uh, general tracker. And then uh, our final area of focus is innovation and social good. And uh, we have a director of research, but we don't view this as one person's job. We view this as every person's job. And all of our data scientists and every member of our team can spend 15% of their time working on initiatives that are important to them and have uh, social benefit. So how do we make all of this happen? Uh, having built big data capabilities globally now in two countries, I look at four essential pillars of how to uh, set up a big data capability. Uh, the first and most important uh, of those are people. Uh, while vendors always will have a role, if you want to have competitive advantage in big data, you must own the capability in-house. 
Uh, we have data scientists and data engineers in every Vodafone uh, country, supported by a small central team uh, ag group. We promote an innovative culture and uh, cross-market uh, tribes. We view data as a competitive advantage, and like everyone else, uh, we're looking to have the widest possible internal and external data sources. Where we really place emphasis, though, is how do we make data usable and how do we make it automated? Telco data, more than any other data I've seen, is extremely messy, extremely large. It's about boiling the data down to the usable bits and automating the process so that we have this available to us all the time and for all use cases. In terms of process, we are, uh, subscribe to Agile methodology, we work in two-week sprints, and we have an open code repository. Uh, even where we cannot share data across countries, we can share code across countries. So that a data scientist in Turkey or in Tanzania can take something that was developed in Germany and modify the code to fit uh, his or her particular local market needs. Another change that we firmly believe in is treating customer permissions as an asset. Uh, too often we view this as just a legal function, when in reality it should be a marketing function. Uh, we should be giving customers clear choice and clear reason to say, yes, please use uh, my data to improve my experience. Uh, finally, last but not least in the, the four essential ingredients uh, is technology. Uh, I'm not going to give you a list of recommended technology tools because they will probably all change uh, in three to six months from now. Uh, the key for us is having a coordinated architectural approach across Vodafone markets and the flexibility to continuously upgrade uh, our tools as needed with a quick experimental approach. So uh, what have we been focusing on in Vodafone in the past uh, few years? What are some of our initial use cases? We placed greatest emphasis on customer retention. Uh, you know, big data is all about the customer experience, and we started with the group of customers who had the most need, um, those who were at risk of lead leaving, those who had a poor experience. And we used big data to come up with personalized offers that would address those customers' pain points and get them to stay. And I'm happy to say we have uh, big data-powered retention models in all of our markets, and that the best performing of them can convince two out of three detractors to remain with Vodafone and become at least passives and hopefully promoters. Uh, convergence has another big area of uh, focus for us. Through the big data initiative, for the first time, we were able to break down silos. From a customer perspective, there is nothing more frustrating than being treated like you're four different people if you have uh, one mobile account, another mobile account, a fixed account, and a TV account with the same provider. Um, now that we have all of that data in one place, we've moved from a single customer view to a household view, and we're addressing our customers' needs, and we're coming up with better ideas around uh, new product development as well. A third area that was a quick hit for us was uh, fraud detection. Through big data approaches, we can detect fraud nine times faster than we used to, and we can stop it, and we can reinvest the savings into improving the customer experience through value add. But we're not only doing new uh, analytical efforts, we are delivering them to customers in new ways as well. Uh, all of our work uh, is or will be integrated with the My Vodafone app, with chatbots, and with robots. We are using big data to power uh, what will be a new digital experience for our customers. I also want to talk very briefly about the work we're doing for uh, social good, because we can really use big data to change the world. 
And uh, social good is something our customers want us to do. You can see some statistics on the screen, and this is from a report published by the Vodafone Foundation in 2015. You can download it online. And uh, among Europeans, you have more than half of people who would like us to use their data to help them and others to do things uh, that would improve the environment and societies. And one of the main ways we've been doing that is through uh, M-PESA, which is Vodafone's uh, project, uh, product uh, that is live in nine countries with 32 million active customers. This is a money transfer initiative that is the ultimate example of doing well by doing good. And in the process has lifted 2% of households in Kenya out of poverty. Uh, we were named uh, number one in Fortune Magazine's Change the World list in 2015. And uh, we are committed to continuing to do these types of projects uh, through the Vodafone Foundation and through other partnerships. So in closing, I would like to say that uh, we believe that the future is exciting at Vodafone, and uh, we believe that we in this room as telcos and uh, using big data have the power to change the world and to do well by doing good. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Luis, for this uh, very insightful presentation. Now I would like to invite uh, Ms. Esperanza Magpantai, who is the Senior Statistician at ICT uh, Data and Statistics Division at ITU, to deliver her presentation. You have 10 minutes, Esperanza. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. So the presentation that we, we just heard provided a very good um, example on the use of big data by the operators. And I think this is not just the case uh, in Budafone, but also in operators in, in, our, in your countries or, or back home. But for this uh, session here, what, we, uh, what I would like to show you is a project that the ITU has recently uh, launched. It was launched uh, last year. And at this occasion, at the same occasion of WTIS, we mentioned this project as, a, as an introduction of what we are doing. But today, what we will show you is the outcome of this pilot project. And we will hear experiences from individual countries who are with us today. So the ITU, as a UN specialized agency for telecommunication, has a very unique position in terms of the use of big data because the telecom operators and service providers are within our network. So most of the work that we are doing in this area has been already uh, discussed and presented in, in, in several occasions. First of which was in the production of the Measuring the Information Society report, where we included a section or analysis on the use of big data and possible use of big data. We had also included sessions on big data in the WTIS, particularly the launch of this project in, uh, the, in WTIS that was held last year in Botswana. And we had included different discussions in our expert groups. The ITU has been also a very active member of the UN Global Working Group on Big Data. And of particular interest to us is the use of big data that are coming from mobile operators and service providers. So in June 2016, we launched this project, which includes six countries, each country representing the IT region. So we have Colombia for the Americas, Georgia from CIS, Kenya for Africa, Philippines from Asia and Pacific, Sweden for Europe, and United Arab Emirates for the Arab states. So these countries have uh, started the discussions on big data, and particularly the pilot hopes to achieve a certain goal by the end of this project, 
and particularly to come up with a methodology that can be used by countries in their uh, data collection if they want to also look at using big data for enhancing information society measurements. So for example, in terms of the data that we collect from household statistics and uh, those that are coming from surveys, we see that a number of countries are still not producing indicators, particularly, for example, on the number of inter uh, or the percentage of population using the internet. So in this project, we are hoping that we can have an indicator that can help us at least uh, provide an answer into the, the magnitude of this population, especially for countries who are not able to produce data that are coming from household surveys. Knowing that household surveys can be costly, it can also be time consuming, and it can be, at, in some cases, cannot be conducted regularly. We also hope to see whether we can replace some of the administrative data that we collect using our traditional sources that are collected through uh, the surveys that we send to the telecom regulators and ministries. And finally, what we have want to, to see is whether we can produce a new indicator that could be identified from this big data project. So the different stakeholders in each of the six countries includes the telecom regulator, the telecom ministry, the national statistics office, the telecom service providers, so the operators and, and the ISPs, as well as the data protection agency. So I'm not going to give a very detailed overview of the different roles because this will be emphasized by the different country experiences, but this four key stakeholders play a big role in terms of the implementation of this project in each of these countries. And from the side of the ITU, we help, gu we help guide these countries in terms of the implementation by providing assistance coming from our um, consultants working on us data scientists. So we, we help in terms of the processing of the data. So the project was launched in 2016, and we are now at the final stage. So this month, we are having the final results coming from countries. We have already uh, have some of these results available, but we are just at the process of uh, editing so that it can be released to the public. So at the end of the project, we are also hoping to have a final report where we will be able to compare the different experiences and results that are coming from these pilot countries. So the big data indicators that are part of this uh, project includes 16 or 15 key indicators, which we hope that countries, the pilot countries could produce. And at the same time, we provided them an opportunity to also calculate and derive the indicators that could be used for other purposes in their country. So for example, one of the, the data demands that are coming from, not just from the uh, local, but also from the international statistical data needs is this, the SDG monitoring um, work. So a number of indicators that are uh, included in the SDG monitoring framework cannot be produced by just traditional indicators alone. So we are hoping that the, this exercise can also be used by countries, by national statistical systems, so that they can learn uh, on how to use big data for other purposes, not just on ICT, but also in other, in other sectors. So these indicators that I mentioned are included in a methodology document. This is the main product that is uh, coming from this pilot project. And this methodology document includes description of the 15 indicators along with their processing methodology, just in case countries want to produce uh, data coming from big data sources. We also included some examples that can be used in terms of what are the expected results that could be calculated from big data sources. And finally, we also have some information on how data could be aggregated or disaggregated from the different um, sources. This methodology document is, was being tested in these six pilot countries, and we were able to amend some of the initial proposals in terms of the, the processing and the definitions and data sources that we I outlined initially in the methodology document when we started the process. 
So out of the six countries, five countries use data that are coming from telecom service providers, operators, and ISPs. So Sweden is the only country where we use a different data source, and the result of the Sweden um, big data pilot will be presented in the EGT session, which will be tomorrow. So of the five countries, Colombia uh, managed to calculate around 14 indicators, Georgia around 14 indicators, Kenya nine, Philippines nine in the beginning, and I think they will report around eight indicators, and UAE 11 indicators. So there are limitations in terms of the, the indicators that can be calculated from the different pilot countries, and this will be elaborated to you later on why these are the, the indicators that they manage to calculate from their uh, sources. So one of the main results of this project is the, the experience, experiences learned and the issues that were faced by countries when they were uh, implementing the project. And access to data, especially the administrative and legal procedures and documents, remain to be the most important challenge faced by all the pilot countries. So this is an area that um, should be addressed in, in countries who are um, planning to embark on this um, new, data, new data source, and it can be um, uh, mitigated by uh, different initiatives or different documents that uh, each one of these pilot countries will also mention later on. There's also some challenge in terms of the participation of the stakeholders, so not all of the operators in, in the pilot countries managed to join the process, and this is still related to the first challenge, which is on the access to the data. Resources is a main issue, partly because this is a new area of measurement. Uh, big data skills are not necessarily available in countries, in national statistical offices, or in ministries and regulators, so this is a challenge that needs to be addressed. Uh, particularly to capacity building and resource sharing probably by countries who had already uh, tested the big data uh, work. There's also some infrastructure issue in terms of how the data could be processed and what are the necessary infrastructures and application softwares that should be used to process the data. In terms of the data processing model, and this is related to the data access uh, issue, there are two, basically two models that were proposed in this project. The first model includes having the data pro being processed in the local vicinity of the telecom operators. So if you have two or three operators, they will be the ones, each one of them will be processing the operators in their own premises, and only then the aggregated data can be transferred to another agency. In some cases, it can be the regulator, the ministry, or the national statistical offices. And this model was used in three of the pilot countries, namely in Kenya, Philippines, and the UAE. The second processing option is that the telecom operators or service providers provide the raw data to the telecom regulator ministry or the national statistical offices. So the data physically leaves their premises and it was sent to the agencies for them to process the data in their own vicinity. And this was the case in Georgia, in Colombia, and also for the cases of Sweden. So there are several de deliverables out of this pilot project. Uh, one of the, the results that we are uh, supposed to do is the presentation of the results of this pilot. Uh, some of them we will hear today. The second one is on the methodology document, which we hope to make available after this, uh, the editing work in December. The country reports also will be available publicly online in December and the final report also in December, because all of these are now with the editors. And all of these output documents will be made available through a dedicated uh, big data website that we have at the ITU. I added there the link so you can check um, towards the, 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 this month that I mentioned, so you can see the, the documents that are um, expected from this pilot. 
So if a country or countries wants to go and implement the big data uh, pi a pilot in their own country, and we hope that this second phase, we will have more countries joining the project, we, we are advising them, and based on the experiences that were uh, gained from the six pilot, that they prepare and solve administrative and legal documents that are necessary to access the data from their data providers. So it is important that a, a close dialogue between the data providers and the national stakeholders, meaning, meaning the ministry, the regulator, and the national statistical offices, that they con convene a meeting and talk on what data are needed and why it is important for them to share the data. So like our previous presenter has mentioned, the big data for social good. So part of this discussion among the different stakeholders is in terms of agreeing on the processing model for the data calculation, on whether the data will leave the operator's premises or whether it will be processed within the premises of the service providers. And then when in cases that the data will be analyzed in other agencies, the mode of data transfer should be also discussed because this, re this requires uh, resources and infrastructure from both sides. There's also a need, of course, to have a very standard and clear methodology, and this is what we hope we have done through the methodology that will be uh, an outcome of this project. We hope that we achieve to have a very detailed description of the indicators uh, so that when the, um, the indicators are uh, processed by the operators themselves, they will be able to follow it based on just the, the different uh, information that are contained in the methodology document. We are also hoping to have some examples of algorithms that could be used by countries if they want to calculate it. But the phone mentioned that they have this experience already, that they have uh, the, the codes that could be run in, in the countries that are in the locations that are that want to use the, the processes that they've done, and we hope also that this can be, this can be done in other countries that wants to, to, to process the data. And uh, the most important uh, challenge, and we hope that this can also be solved and look at before a country or countries can embark on this project, is the availability of infrastructure and human resources that will be used or are necessary when calculating or analyzing big data from different sources. And of course, the last one is related again to the administrative and access to the data is the coordination and um, coordination and, and, and discussing with all the data, data providers and all stakeholders. So this is also to the providers for them to understand why it is important to release the data and to share the data and for the data users to be able to understand what are available and what could be used. So that's all. I'm ending my presentation with a, view, with a picture of the methodology document, and we hope that the next presentations will give us more insights in terms of the different experiences that were uh, learned from this pilot project. Thank you very much. Thank you, Esperanza, for giving us this uh, comprehensive overview of this very important project. As we know, countries still face a major gaps in statistics production, and I believe that this uh, project is really very important. Uh, and also for highlighting the challenges and the benefits that we can take from the using alternative big data sources. Now it's time to listen to three out of the six uh, pilot countries, uh, how they experience this uh, data production using big data, and I would like to invite uh, Mr. Mohamed Arli, who is the executive director of the National Statistics and Data Sector Federal Competitiveness and Statistics Authority of the United Arab Emirates. Uh, Mohamed, you have the floor, and uh, you have 10 minutes for your Thank presentation. Thank you very much. Thanks. Um, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, lately, the international statistic community recognized the importance of looking at the new data sources such as big data, especially in the telecommunication industries, because it produces a huge amount of uh, data uh, and information. 
Uh, and this can't be ignored by any statistical office, especially at the era of digitalizations and uh, as mentioned in the first plenary sex, uh, sessions, how we can deliver information or data fast, which is the real-time data for policymakers and decision makers. Uh, this pilot project by the ITU honestly give us a good opportunities to look at the resources or the new data resources that we have in the countries and develop the methodology which has been presented or the document which has been presented to you just now. Uh, UAE, as uh, everyone knows, has participated uh, one of the seven countries in this project. And this project started with a collaboration between the regulat regulatory authorities of the UAE and the ITU with our telecommunication service providers in uh, Etisalat and Do. Introducing the big data uh, in ICT created an opportunities. And uh, this slide is being presented just now, which give us an, an overview how to, or, or kind of a study how we could replace or complement the household survey questions. And at the same time, look at how we could replace some of the administrative uh, record. In our case also, we were able to identify one new indicators. We've, uh, we've selected the option one, where the telecommunications extracted the data in tier one and worked as an initial aggregated in tier two. Then it moved to the uh, premises of the regulatory authorities, where they work with the data scientists to extract the resulting indicators. To summarize the UAE pilot, there were five partners worked on this project, and the collaboration was really important in this project, with 44 trillions of uh, event as initial raw data consolidated to one million um, data records uh, with uh, you compose, the data composed of the CDR and the IPDR with 100% coverage of the UAE subscriber, and that was a really a huge achievement for us. 13, as mentioned by Spranza, 13 indicator being enhanced in our case, and two indicators were not able to measure due to some of the missing uh, information due uh, at the time of the calculation, and one new indicator has been introduced in, the, in our case. Using the big data analytics provided a holistic view of the infrastructure readiness of the country and at the same time the people behavior in the countries and how they use technology and many others. Such information provided the government's uh, potential indicators how the infrastructure is ready and at the same time the people, re people ready to adopt new initiatives such as smart cities or internet of things which could be implemented in the countries. The 100% subscriber coverage gave us an opportunity to create a new indicators, which is the origin destination matrix. And this, this single data set provided a really comprehensive information of the human mobility and the seasonality of their mobility. Also, it covers the tourism movement who is using the roaming uh, surfaces. And imagine, as a statistical office, we always think also outside the area of ICT. So imagine if we could inject uh, other uh, dimensions such as purchase or human purchase behavior in the country. So we know where actually people move versus where they actually spend the money. And it could actually hit different sectors like tourism, economics, and many others. We did a mapping exercise to look at on the result to compare the outcomes. And we've noticed that there is uh, enhancement and complement on the household survey data, and also on a few of the administrative data. And there is a potential replacement also from the household survey indicators uh, in this case. And, a and, and in our case also, it, would, it might require further analysis on the result because we still see some differences between the. Uh, administra administrative data or the data that we have in the NSO versus the data that is being produced by the public sectors. Sorry, by the big data. Uh, there are a few challenges um, faced by uh, during the pilot project, uh, which has been which has mentioned which has been mentioned in the previous um, uh, presentation. But I have to mention here that maybe we did not have an issue with the resources. Our telecommunication, which is Salat and Do, had really expertise in the big data, and they had a group of data scientists similar to Vodafone, and that helped us a lot to produce the data in a much faster way. Uh, as mentioned also early on in the presentation, we, we had a quick, uh, we had a bit of issue on the administrative or the 
um, the the, the, the legality or the agreement to be signed to ensure the confidentiality of the information which has been extracted, uh, limitation or limitation and access to the data, that was also one of the challenges. Unification of the data format, especially between different service providers, and developing the methodology and algorithms. If we could, if could, if it could be provided earlier, that will be uh, really helpful. And now with the methodology document, I think it will be much easier for country to produce the data much faster. One of the most um, important success factors in our case was the uh, guardian of the regulatory authorities and the way that they manage the collaborations between all the stakeholders and the telecommunications to ensure and manage the confidentiality of the information that is being extracted. And the result still would require further alteration to ensure that uh, uh, to ensure to, to unleash the full potential of the big data because there is much more we could do with the data from the telecommunication industries. Uh, uh, as mentioned also earlier, the developing the human resource is very important in the area of uh, data scientists or big data, which will add a huge value to produce more analytics and finding in ICT industries. Uh, developing an automation tools to pre-process the acquired data, that will help a lot on the producing the analytical part of the, all the data uh, received, and also develop a, a new model which will protect uh, the information and confidentialities either by recoding some of the uh, confidential information of the, uh, of, the, of the users and the telecom or their, or their customers. That's, uh, that's in general uh, some of the lesson learned in this pilot project with the ITU. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mohamed Akhli, for sharing this experience uh, with us, and especially on the lessons learned, which is uh, really very important in this context. Now I would like to give the floor to Ms. Alana Ramos, who is the uh, Division Chief of the Program Monitoring, Evaluation, and Statistics Coordination at the Department of Information and Communications Technology at the Philippines. Lana, you have uh, 10 minutes. You have the floor. So good afternoon, everyone, and um, uh, on behalf of the Department of uh, Information and Communications Technology of the Philippines, I would like to share with you um, the experience of the Philippines um, as, it as it participated in the big data pilot study of the ITU. And uh, before I start the presentation, I'd like to say that um, I'd like to thank the ITU for inviting us to participate. It was indeed a very, it is a very educational experience and um, um, I would like to highlight some of the important issues and challenges that we encountered uh, during the project. Well, first of all, as it was already explained earlier, um, we were invited to participate in the big data conference, uh, big data, sorry, uh, pilot study um, during the um, ITU conference of uh, May 2016. And uh, uh, as explained earlier, this is a uh, collaborative uh, study of six countries and uh, the Department of ICT was identified as the agency focal for the project. It, it is ongoing as we await uh, further um, results, uh, data results from our providers. Um, uh, jumping to our project resources, um, 
some of our data providers uh, found it essential to supplement their current teams for the project. An average of four to five uh, members for each team was required. Um, a dedicated uh, team actually had to be formed for the project as it entailed additional work and uh, uh, resources uh, for the project. For the DICT, as it's designated focal, we also designated um, a specific team to oversee the project. And uh, uh, the support of the legal division was very integral, as I will explain early, in, in later slides, as uh, legal aspects were very, uh, were very important. The National Privacy Commission, uh, which is an attached agency of the DICT, is also a very important uh, partner in this project, and it oversaw privacy concerns uh, that arose. The advantage for the Philippines, well, um, um, the ICT sector is one of the sectors that is enjoying a very positive trend, and we see big data as contributing to further growth of the sector. Um, it also has an active mobile phone market, and uh, right now we count more than 120 million mobile cellular subscribers as of December 2016. Uh, so the, the use of big data is really going to be a potential contrib contributor for development and policy making. Um, the DICT also sees the project as important in paving the way for how we will work with uh, private telecommunications companies. So the pilot project essentially uh, laid the foundation perhaps for future public-private partnerships in terms of uh, data sharing and maybe um, engaging the private sector in more active uh, public sector activities, especially as we as we uh, 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 move move towards um, big data planning and policy making. It's all. It was also an opportunity to test the new legal environment for uh, data protection. Um, the project happened to come at the height of of or rather. Um, the environment in which we were trying to test the Data Privacy Act and its implementing rules and regulations. So it was a good opportunity to see how these regulations would impact on data privacy. Our stakeholders were two uh, very big the telecommunications companies, which account for about 90 to 90 90 to 95 percent of the market, so they they cover a majority of the telecommunications market in the Philippines. They are our two very important uh, private partners for this project, and as I mentioned earlier, the National Privacy Commission is an important partner as well, and the National Telecommunications Commission. Key milestones, um, these are important uh, activities that uh, mark the um, conduct of the project, and the project kickoff was held in June of 2016. Uh, February, we held a, uh, a um, threshold analysis briefing uh, with regard to the conduct of a privacy impact assessment study to look at uh, privacy issues that uh, the project um, raised. In March, we had several technical meetings with ITU. In April, we hosted the, uh, the visit of the uh, um, ITU uh, consultant who came to oversee the data processing. And in July, we welcomed the first submission of um, the data from our providers. Uh, concerns and actions taken. These, I think, are very important issues that should be discussed as we move forward, perhaps in a phase two of the project, and as the DICT itself 
moves forward with its own projects on big data. So privacy concerns and access to the data. Um, primarily, um, uh, this was a major concern uh, raised by private sector companies and uh, we address them through developing legal instruments such as a memorandum of agreement that covered uh, roles and responsibilities of data providers and the DICT. Uh, we conducted the privacy impact assessment. This was um, a very important step as, uh, as uh, stipulated by uh, the National Privacy Commission. Um, this was, uh, in fact, non-negotiable. Uh, before we commenced, we, move, we could move forward with the project. Um, and the ICT assumed most of the risks in the absence of uh, NDAs um, between data providers and consultants. So um, the key doc document here, as far as the Philippines was concerned, was having a very, very comprehensive um, memorandum of agreement. Um, with regard to the indicators, as mentioned earlier, we could only produce eight of the, of the 15 required indicators, and this was because of the risk of exposing sensitive data as raised by our providers, uh, such as antenna locations, and this impacted on two, uh, two indicators. Unavailable data and time constraints to process, and this impacted on one, two, three, four, five, five indicators. And uh, so we ended up with the final eight uh, indicators, uh, uh, BDO3, BDO4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 11. 11. Data sharing and transfer, again, uh, caused some issues, okay? Um, the issues were mainly which way we could send the data that could ensure that uh, 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 this could be as private as possible, as secure as possible. And uh, we ended up with deciding on using one of the DICT's um, file transfer uh, protocols, and we, this is called pakete.gov.ph. And um, uh, this was used by, the, through, uh, by one of the providers in transferring the data. This remains to be a, 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 some of the uh, issues moving forward. Uh, how to secure data transfers. Okay, the memorandum of agreement, if I may highlight, had relevant portions, which may, many of you may want to consider. Um, the, the appointment of a data protection officer uh, was stipulated in our memorandum of agreement, and uh, uh, this is on the part of both uh, the private sector and the public sector, which was the ICT. The conduct of a full privacy impact assessment. Again, this is part of the implementing rules and regulations now of the recently um, passed Data Privacy Act. And the data to be provided as uh, anonymized. So no, no trace of personally identifiable information should uh, be submitted uh, for the project. Okay. Another risk mitigating measure that we adopted was the process data had been processed within the, within the premises of the data provider for the project. Um, finally, um, some recommendations moving forward uh, in, 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 in the case of a phase two, perhaps. A risk analysis for each country to include preliminary study of privacy and data protection concerns. Uh, this is very important as this caused some delay um, in, in the case of the Philippines, several months in fact, just to ensure that all privacy concerns were addressed. Pre-project consultations with target stakeholders on the commitment and data they are willing to share. Um, this is again important because um, you would like to get the full commitment of your data providers as well as uh, the data and level of data that they are willing to share. Development of legal instruments to define roles and responsibilities and data management cycles. Again, these were the um, uh, key, key documents uh, that um, uh, provided the foundation for, for, the, for the actual implementation of the project. So this is important from the very beginning. Uh, this should be uh, ensured. And 
uh, securing data sharing processes and platforms. Again, from the very start, you, uh, we would recommend that uh, data sharing and, and platforms to be used should already be discussed as early as possible. And uh, that would uh, conclude my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Ramos, for sharing uh, the Philippines' experience with this pilot and mainly for highlight, highlighting the importance of the memorandum of understanding and also all the privacy issues around this uh, data sharing. Well, now we will move for the, our last uh, presenter, Mr. Juan David Orlate, Orlate Torres, for uh, presenting uh, the Colombian experience. Uh, Mr. Torres is the head of the planning and se sectoral studies from the Minister of Information and Communications Technology in Colombia. Mr. Juan, you have uh, 10 minutes. You have the floor. Hello. Alexander, muchas gracias. A todos los del panel, eh, un saludo muy especial. A todos ustedes también un saludo muy, muy especial. Muy honrado de estar en estas tierras tan preciosas como la que es eh, Túnez. Quiero eh, primero darle las gracias a la UIT por permitirnos tener la oportunidad de generar este proyecto piloto en Colombia, de aplicar el modelo de Big Data para la generación de estadísticas. Eh, en Colombia realmente le estamos apostando a la generación de estadísticas a través de nuevas fuentes de información. Y el aceptar, digamos, este reto eh, hace que las condiciones o permite que las condiciones en Colombia eh, hayan tenido eh, las dimensiones necesarias para poder desarrollar este ejercicio de la mejor manera. Hemos venido trabajando fuertemente eh, en la generación de estadísticas, primeramente vía registros administrativos. Eso ha permitido que se genere como una relación de confianza con los operadores. Este ejercicio lleva más o menos ya eh, cerca de ocho o nueve años. Eh, y aparte de eso, se viene complementando también con la generación de información a través de fuentes primarias, a, tra a través de grandes encuestas en materia TIC, en este caso en particular. Este, sin duda, era el nuevo paso, el nuevo reto Colombia efectivamente le está apostando a la generación de estadísticas a través de unas nuevas fuentes de información y por eso nos cayó, como se dice en Colombia, como anillo al dedo este reto. En Colombia eh, trabajamos a este proyecto con tres entidades básicamente, a través del Ministerio de las Tecnologías de la Información y las Comunicaciones, quien yo represento, que es la que se encarga de la generación de la política pública en materia de TIC. Está nuestro Departamento Nacional de Estadística, que es la cabeza rectora o el ente rector en materia de estadísticas en Colombia. Y el operador, claro, que es uno de los tres operadores de telefonía móvil eh, celular en Colombia. Eh, pues nosotros fuimos el punto de contacto, me refiero al Ministerio TIC, punto de contacto con la ITU, y nuestro eh, Departamento Estadístico fue el validador y fue el que nos ayudó a articular al interior eh, del país la generación de este proyecto de Big Data. ¿Cuáles fueron las principales acciones o la descripción de lo que hicimos? Inicialmente mandamos o enviamos tres comunicaciones a los tres operadores en Colombia que operan en Colombia como Tigo, Movistar y Claro. Eh, claro fue la entidad o fue el operador que nos respondió afirmativamente como también lo hizo en su momento Movistar, pero más adelante les comento, Movistar se inclinó por otro modelo y con otras condiciones que nos impidió en ese momento, digamos, continuar con, con Movistar y por eso eh, nos fuimos con el operador Claro. Eh, adicionalmente a ello, eh, tuvimos que mirar la información que por ahí eh, se iba a generar, como es información bastante sensible para los operadores, nos tocó, así, al igual que eh, nuestros eh, países que también desarrollaron este proyecto, un acuerdo de confidencialidad, porque sin duda los eh, operadores son temerosos de que eso llegue a afectar su negocio. 
Eh, como les decía, entonces el operador Claro fue eh, el que eh, nos propuso eh, desarrollar este ejercicio conjuntamente con la metodología 2 eh, de información. ¿Qué significa la metodología 2 o la, el, segundo, el segundo modelo? Y es que ellos compartían la información y nosotros internamente la procesábamos. Eh, realmente, claro, en Colombia tiene una porción del mercado del 50% y eso pues nos daba, digamos, una información mucho más amplia, eh, que pues eh, nos daba entonces más información eh, y mucho más precisa de lo que nosotros estábamos eh, buscando. Eh, y después de ciertos retrasos, algunas inquietudes que resolver, que más adelante también las, se las voy a presentar en los temas de desafíos, iniciamos entonces eh, este reto en particular de conseguir la información. ¿Cuáles fueron nuestros recursos? Básicamente fueron 10 personas eh, que estuvieron envueltas o que estuvieron trabajando en este ejercicio, gente del Ministerio TIC, gente del Departamento Estadístico Nacional y gente obviamente del operador Claro con todo el acompañamiento de eh, los de, de la ITU. Nosotros nos tardamos cerca de un año y dos meses en desarrollar, en procesar toda esta información. De este año y dos meses, eh, mucho más que la mitad de este tiempo eh, se tardó o se explica por eh, la dificultad de firmar esos acuerdos de confidencialidad. Eh, la infraestructura, pues contamos con cuatro nodos virtuales, de los cuales hubo 5 terabytes para funcionamiento, 24 gigas de RAM eh, y un 8 cores, digamos, de procesamiento. Eh, a, trabajamos a través del sistema operativo Oracle Linux. Bueno, eh, igualmente estos datos, estos indicadores se calcularon con base en las herramientas MapReduce y Spark y eh, fueron eh, corridos en la plataforma Hadoo. ¿Cuáles fueron los principales desafíos que nosotros encontramos? ¿Cómo convencer al operador para que nos pudiera suministrar la información? Y pues siempre eh, tuvimos como, eh, como premisa tener un gana-gana, es decir, nosotros ganamos teniendo la información de los operadores para poderlo obviamente estudiar y mejorar nuestra política pública y obviamente el operador tenía también que ganar algo. Y lo que encontramos en el ejercicio de este gana-gana es que el operador eh, nos mostró su interés por dos razones fundamentales. La primera es que le generaba a ellos un reto técnico o tecnológico el poder procesar toda esta información y la segunda, que tal vez es la más eh, llamativa, es que ellos solamente hasta desarrollar este proyecto se dieron cuenta de la cantidad de información que ellos podían generar y que no la estaban utilizando. Esto, sin duda, generó digamos, un interés por parte del operador para proveernos la información. Mm, igualmente, desafío eh, relacionado con... Eh, riesgos no previstos, eh, por ejemplo, todo este debate de la anonimización de la información eh, privada, eso fue lo que generó mucho más eh, debate y retrasos en el ejercicio de nuestro proyecto. Mm, los recursos tecnológicos. Eh, en el Ministerio TIC no teníamos la infraestructura tecnológica para poder procesar la información, pero sí contamos aquí con un aliado especial, que fue nuestro departamento estadístico, que sí contaba con una infraestructura robusta que nos permitía desarrollar este ejercicio. Sin duda, ese es un tema que hay que tener muy en cuenta. Y eh, también el tema de reprocesamiento. Permanentemente eh, nos tocaba validar con el operador, porque la información que salía inicialmente pues, no era consistente con los datos administrativos que tenía la misma eh, operador, como el Ministerio TIC, eh, pero eso no desanima, al contrario, lo que nos invita es a estar muy permanentemente trabajando los equipos técnicos y eso genera finalmente mucha más confianza en la generación de este tipo de iniciativas. Unos poquitos indicadores o resultados, nosotros efectivamente trabajamos los 14 indicadores mmm, y, vamos a tra y trajimos eh, para conocimiento de ustedes cerca de cuatro indicadores. El primer indicador eh, da cuenta de eh, el uso de la eh, tecnología 
o el uso más bien de las eh, actividades no asociadas con, eh, eh, con temas de Internet o servicios de Internet, por ejemplo, temas de mensaje y de texto y de voz. Lo que podemos encontrar aquí en el mapa de Colombia es que efectivamente la tecnología más usada es la 3G y en los lugares donde están, digamos, más marginados, digamos, de la que están en la periferia, pues eh, la tecnología que más se usa es la 2G. Y obviamente donde está concentrado las grandes poblaciones es donde se empieza a ver un desarrollo más amplio de 4G. Cuando ya vemos el, el asunto en temas de eh, tecnologías eh, para uso de Internet, pues la participación sigue siendo eh, alta la de 2G, pero 3G, digamos, eh, sin duda es la que mayor participación tiene en el mercado, pero empieza, digamos, a irrumpir la tecnología 4G con 4 millones y medio, digamos, de conexiones. En Colombia, la tecnología 4G es la que más crece y eso, digamos, se ve registrado en este cuadro. Venimos creciendo más o menos trimestre, cerca del 15% crecemos en ese uso de tecnología y además se va a ver complementado cuando estemos subastando la banda de 700 MHz. También tenemos otro indicador relacionado con eh, el roaming, cuando lo activan los extranjeros, cuando llegan a nuestro país. Recuerden que este solamente son los resultados del operador claro, que más o menos tiene el 50% de la participación del mercado. Eh, y aquí podemos registrar que solo con el operador claro, cerca del 22-25% de los extranjeros que llegan a Colombia activan el roaming. Si nosotros adicionamos los otros dos operadores, pues muy seguramente tendremos el 50%. Es decir, la mitad de los extranjeros que llegan a Colombia activan el roaming. Finalmente, otro indicador que quisimos mirar es el desarrollo de la infraestructura móvil con el, asociado con la población. Y lo que ustedes pueden observar es que efectivamente donde está concentrada la población es donde está desarrollada más la infraestructura. Eh, todos estos resultados, sin duda, lo que nos va a permitir a nosotros, entre otras, es mirar cómo podemos atacar o reducir las brechas digitales. Colombia es muy marcado a veces esas brechas y, sin duda, este ejercicio eh, de generación de estadísticas a través de Big Data pues, nos va a permitir, sin, sin duda, eh, afinar nuestra política pública en, en este particular. Las recomendaciones finales. Eh, el tema jurídico es lo que más toma tiempo. En nuestro caso, como les decía, seis, siete, casi ocho meses duramos en el debate jurídico para firmar ese acuerdo de confidencialidad. Fue bastante desgastante, pero finalmente pues, eh, se logró. Eh, definir la hoja de ruta, una hoja de ruta clara, donde no solamente aborde los temas de la infraestructura tecnológica, sino también temas de procesamiento, donde está incluido obviamente los científicos de datos, que en estos casos son tan importantes y que en el caso de Colombia pues, fue proveído por, no solamente por el acompañamiento de la UIT, sino también digamos, con, por, a través de eh, el, nuestro Departamento Nacional de Estadística. Eh, permanentemente hay que estar revisando los datos que se procesan para, para no esperar hasta el final y volver a tener que reprocesarlos. Es bueno irlo permanentemente eh, trabajando eh, en la medida que van saliendo los resultados. Eh, igual, de igual manera, poder trabajar los resultados a nivel eh, micro, para después poderlos expandir a, a, a nivel macro. Y eh, finalmente, eh, estar eh, validando la información eh, eh, que, se, que se viene procesando permanentemente. Esto es básicamente los, digamos, los resultados del proyecto de Big Data en Colombia y eh, pues con esto cierro la presentación. Muchas gracias, Jorge. Muchas gracias, Juan, por compartir tu experiencia en este piloto de nuestro país. En this, uh, pilot. Uh, as being part of the statistical community, I think that I can say that we acknowledge the benefits of big data sources for the production of official statistics. statistics. And I think that what I saw from uh, your experience is that besides the technical issues that must be addressed and also methodological issues, we have to look very careful, carefully how to engage stakeholders, how to design proper agreements that uh, treat uh, 
privacy, confidentiality, and so data sharing is really key in this uh, process. And I think that from this uh, ITU pilot experience, we can learn a lot and how to scale, scale up to uh, other indicators. We still have about 10 minutes, and I would like to open up the floor for questions and comments. The floor is open. So we were very clear. Yeah, I guess so. Or it's very difficult. <laughs> <laughs> no questions? Uh, yes, I cannot read uh, your... Please, uh, can you identify yourself, please, and then... Tunisia. Yeah, Tunisia, you have the floor. Merci, Monsieur le Moderateur. Mesdames, Messieurs les panélistes, je vous remercie pour la qualité et la clarté de vos interventions. Il est évident que les pays émergents devraient être impliqués dans l'utilisation des big data en tant que vecteur de transformation dans la société de l'information. À ce titre, nous proposons de considérer l'évaluation de la fiabilité des résultats d'une étude statistique comme un nouvel indicateur. Nous considérons que les big data contribuent à l'amélioration de cette fiabilité à travers la fourniture de données opportunes, plus fréquentes et plus granulaires. Une étude statistique fiable impacte sans doute le processus de mesure et d'évaluation de la société de l'information, d'où l'importance de ce nouvel indicateur. La Tunisie souhaite aussi considérer la croissance résultante de l'adoption du big data en entreprise. Il s'agit de mesurer le chiffre d'affaires que devrait générer le marché de big data. Cette mesure peut considérer principalement 1. Les nouveaux canaux de marketing 2. Les nouveaux flux de revenus générés par la vente de matériel, logiciels et produits complémentaires et enfin, le nombre d'emplois générés sur le marché. Et merci. Thank you, Tunisie. We have another one. Yes, please, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Moderator and Mr. Chair. May I provide an additional input on the presentation of Ms. Alana Ramos in behalf of the Department of ICT of the Philippines? We shall continue with data in, data, big data initiatives even after the completion of the big data pilot study. No, it is because we see big data as important in policy formulation and in implementation of the free internet uh, Wi-Fi across the country. Now, being in a deregulated telecommunications industry and based on what we have experienced in the conduct of the pilot study, we aim to strengthen our partnerships with the telecommunications operators and ISPs in identifying ICT-related big data. Now, we also aim to partner with other private uh, big data providers so that we are able to capture relevant big data for us to be able to develop grounded and evidence-based policies. Now, these data providers could be from the private entities or academic organizations, which provide open source applications. Now, this is like what the bandwidth signal and statistics or the BAS project does. Now, I understand this will be the showcase in a discussion uh, this afternoon as well. Now, once more, in behalf of the Department of ICT of the Government of the Philippines, we take this opportunity to extend the gratitude for including us in the ITU uh, pilot study on big data. Now, we hope that the Philippines again be part of future IT, ITU initiatives. Thank you, Mr. Chair, Mr. Moderator. Thank you very much, the Philippines. Uh, Bangladesh, please. No? Yes, please. You have the floor. Assalamu alaikum, Jamian. Shukran al Fursa. Fima Hussel Bayanat Dahma, Banisbel Sudan, and Isaac Kur Talata, Imkin Talata Tahadiat, Tawach and Nas. أولا عايز أقول إنه واحدة من التحديات اللي بتواجه الناس هي تحديث اللوائح التنظيمية والتشريعات فيما يتواكب مع مشروع البيانات الضخمة الحاجة الثانية اللي عايز أقول إنه عدم وجود معايير دولية موحدة حتى الآن الناس تشغل على وكذا الحاجة الثالثة 
لم تعتمد حتى الان نظم وتحليل وبرمجيات لكل الناس مع بعض افتكر انه الثلاثه تحديات اللي بتواجهنا هي بتواجه اغلب الدول الموجوده الان آه شكرا جزيلا Thank you, Sudan. The last uh, question from Brazil, and then I will give one minute to each speaker. Brazil, you have the floor. Hi, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm Daniel from the regulator of Brazil. Uh, we had a similar study in Brazil. We, we tried to conduct a similar study in Brazil uh, during the World Cup and uh, the Olympics. Uh, we worked together with our NCO to collect data on roaming during the, the event, but uh, we faced issues like uh, we as regulators, we didn't have the processing power to process the information or the uh, storage capacity. And uh, the operators, they didn't comply with, uh, with the restrictions, with the amount of the investment they needed to, to, to process the data themselves and to storage the data. So we had to drop the, the whole project altogether because of this, these issues that other countries are also facing. Thank you. Thank you, Brazil. Uh, the very last uh, intervention, please. Uh, good afternoon. And thank you so much for the presentations. It was very illuminating. Um, I noticed that in a lot of the countries that um, you had to agree some MOUs with the operators. Uh, I wondered. I wanted to know the you know the major content of those MOUs. Well, what were the issues that uh, operators were concerned with? Secondly, I also wanted to know the cost of the project, who bought the cost? Was it the operators that bought the cost or it was a combination of both operator and government? Thank you. Thank you very much. Now I would like to give uh, one minute to uh, each speaker to make uh, your final remarks and maybe addressing some of the issues, in particular the last one related to the memorandum of understanding, the agreements and the costs and all the technical issues. So uh, I'll give one minute for each, and I will start with uh, Louis. Thank you. It was very interesting to hear the challenges that you're facing. Uh, I think the closer you can keep your privacy officers, the better. And I think all of us have work to do in making big data seem less scary. I actually personally hate the term uh, big data. Uh, I'm sure it was great when it was coined by whatever consultant who uh, helped all of us in the room get salary increases by uh, calling ourselves big data analysts. But the, the public perception now of big data uh, makes it seem very scary, very intrusive. Internally, we've pivoted more to talking about data analytics because what we're doing is uh, trying to improve the customer experience first and foremost. Um, the more we can talk about big data in simple language, the more we can be transparent, the more we can show very directly the benefits to consumers, um, the better uh, this will be for all of us. Um, so make friends with your privacy officers, have them sit with you as they do uh, for me, and uh, that's my best practical suggestion on how to get started in, in uh, making this an easier process for everyone. Thank you, uh, Luis. Uh, Esperanza? You have one minute. Thank you very much. I would like to just probably address the issue of um, MOUs and NDA. So what we are also hoping to do in addition to the indicators, definitions, and methodologies, so the document that we will produce as part of this project will also include examples of MOUs and NDAs that came out from this pilot so that those that wants to use them in the national context would be able to adapt them according to the needs of their uh, stakeholders. So that's one thing. And at the same time, on the applications and, and softwares that are uh, what should be used in countries. I think out of this pilot, there are not necessarily a standard um, application that could be used, but I invite 
invite you to also talk to these uh, pilot countries and see what would be best uh, fitting to your needs and at the same time what are available in, in your operators already. Because in some cases, you may have already those applications that exist in operators that you don't necessarily need to, to reinvent the wheel. Thank you. Thank you, Speranza. Mohamed, you have the floor. Uh, maybe I have two comments here. Number one is that the data, the telecommunication, it could be used by the uh, service provider to commercialize it and marketing. And marketing. So you have to ha to include that in your memorandum of understanding, not to uh, not to break their uh, maybe one channel of business. The other point is the methodology for big data and statistics. How to calculate the indicators is very clear. And it has a, uh, an international agreement between all the NSOs how to produce the indicator related to statistics. So the same things, I think this exercise with the ICTs, if the methodology is being agreed internationally, discussed with the statistical offices, and do a comparison of the result where at least both result of both results statistically and from a big data kind of match, then I think we uh, we would be able to sort out or to come up with agreement on the, on the methodology to be used for big data indicators. Thank you, Mohamed. Alana, please, you have the floor. Yes, thank you. Uh, with regard to the uh, memorandum of agreements, as I mentioned, this is very central. This was very central to the project. And uh, maybe perhaps um, as lessons learned, you could look at not just bilateral, pro, uh, bilateral agreements, by, but tripartite, perhaps, um, because uh, it, it will minimize so many agreements. Uh, so you can probably include everyone in one, in one memorandum of agreement. Um, in, in our case, it's very specific to the Philippines, so we were compliant with the Data Privacy Act, as well as implementing rules and regulations. So a very key, key component of the, uh, the, the, the uh, MOA was having uh, stipulating the the inclusion of a privacy impact assessment uh, study, um, uh, as well as other key key uh, provisions. But that's what I can I can advise. Thank you. Thank you, Alona. This is indeed a multi-stakeholder uh, effort. Huh? It's not only bilateral agreements. Uh, Juan, you have one minute. Yes. Bueno. Eh, Sin duda, nuestra recomendación es que tiene que haber una voluntad política desde el más alto nivel para que se pueda permear eh, en todos los niveles todo este ejercicio de concientización respecto de la aplicación de este modelo de Big Data para la generación de estadísticas. Se tiene también que trabajar eh, no solamente con esa voluntad política, sino también trabajar en varios aspectos que fortalezcan el sistema de información Eh, del país, un, 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 un ente rector de estadístico robustecido, con una infraestructura bien robustecida, que tenga credibilidad y que no, haga acompañamiento a todos estos ejercicios de generación de estadística, la generación de confianza con los operadores, todo, digamos, sobre la mesa, donde se puedan ver realmente cuáles son los intereses de cada parte y donde se les pueda evidenciar lo que, sobre todo para, para el operador, lo que ellos pueden ganar con la generación de estas estadísticas. Eh, y sin duda, por detrás, todo un equipo técnico riguroso de las partes involucradas que permitan tener eh, pues, eh, la certeza y la confiabilidad en la información que se, que se, que se procesa. Básicamente, esas serían las, las recomendaciones finales. Thank you, Juan. Thank you to all panelists. I think that uh, uh, just a final remarks. Esperanza has mentioned the UN Global Working Group on uh, Big Data for Official Statistics, and I just would like to recall that uh, this ITU initiative is very much aligned with the initiative that is uh, stated in the Cape Town, the UN Cape Town um, Global Action Plan for Sustainable Development uh, Data, <coughs> that puts a lot of emphasis on revising the fundamental principles of official statistics and on the need to embrace open data initiatives as well as to remove barriers 
to the use of new data sources uh, such as big data. So I think that it, it is our responsibility to uh, foster the debate in our countries and discuss how to engage stakeholders, government, NSOs, private sector, around this issue on uh, use and sharing big data source for official statistics. And with that, I, I think that uh, our member states are really grateful for the uh, ITU initiative in, in promoting this uh, uh, pilot project. Especially, I would like to thank the ICT Data and Statistics Division that has put a lot of efforts in helping and assisting countries, the six countries, in trying to take advantage of these big data sources and try to develop new methodologies. And uh, I think that, as I said, as part of the statistics community, we have to embrace this open data initiative. And innovation and modernization of uh, national statistical systems depends, highly depends, on all these new partnerships this multi-stakeholder approach and uh, stakeholder engagement. We still have a lot of the technical issues, methodological issues to, to be addressed, but we have to uh, foster this debate in our countries. With that, I would like to thank all the speakers for the very, very insightful presentations, and I hand over the floor to Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Shukran jazilan, Sayyid Alexandru. Uh, with this, uh, uh, thank you very much for all panelists. And uh, it was very useful and deep. And uh, I think we learn a lot from this uh, experience and trials. Uh, as I said, uh, uh, I think uh, one year ago, I said in this place that uh, our petrol is the data. And as we learn together to develop the petrol industry and to get uh, diesel, to get plastic, to get uh, uh, gas, and to get different uh, uh, sector of uh, petroleum uh, industry, we have to build up together the data uh, industry. And this is a long process that we are developing together. And I believe the experience of ITU is very useful in this uh, state for uh, this session. Thank you very much and see you tomorrow. Thank you.